Hi, Dr. Arvind Poswal, Dr. Ace Clinic, Delhi, India. Today, we will be talking about the root cause of hair loss, the two different theories of hair loss. Because once we understand the correct reason for hair loss, then only will we be able to treat that. So, the old or the traditional theory of hair loss states that everything all over hair loss etc is mediated by testosterone testosterone gives rise to dihydrotestosterone or dht and somehow dht enters the hair follicle and damages it if it is genetically predisposed and ultimately causes miniaturization leading to hair fall so that has led to a slew of treatments basically focused on DHT inhibitors. Now I have two logics against this theory. Based on my experience, I have been in this field since 1997 and uh, I first did FUE or extraction of individual follicles in 1999 long before I know anyone who was doing it and also body hair to scalp transplant and beard hair to scalp transplant beard hair to scalp transplant the world's first case was done at my clinic in 2006 and it was documented so anyway apart from my credentials let's get back to the topic now if testosterone and DHT were responsible for hair loss solely in androgenic alopecia or male pattern alopecia, then people should have lost hair at the age of 15 to 18 years. That is the time when the body experiences peak testosterone levels. That is also the age when naturally you will have the maximum DHT also leading to loss of the hair follicle which are genetically predisposed. However, we don't find it to be true. We find two things. One is that hair loss keeps on continuing and sometimes occur after 30 or even 35 years of age. So that is uh, a time when the testosterone levels are actually going down. But the hair loss is progressing. Secondly, a whole lot of DHT inhibitors have been tried and I say based on my extensive experience that no, they do not work consistently, otherwise no doctors would be bald. It is not just about the side effects. If someone were to tell me that taking finasteride is going to help each and every one of the patients or even a good 70% of them, let alone 90%, I would be happy to claim that as the only treatment required. However, I have not found that to be true. In some cases, we get good results, but that is about it. Same thing for minoxidil. And if you ask, if you ask deeper questions about the exact mechanism of action at the cellular at the genetic level of how this hair loss is occurring, how DHT is accentuating it and how DHT blockers are being able to help out. That is not explained, that is not known. Even with minoxidil, it is the same story that they found that it helps, but they do not know, we do not know the exact reason because till now we were dealing with the human body, doctors as well as scientists, scientists were ahead of us, but still in a more superficial manner at the level of tissues, at the level of organs. Okay, this is a medicine for your liver, this is a medicine for your heart, or this is a medicine for your blood sugar. Now, Science has progressed. We have gone down. It is like zooming in into the individual cells, into the environment of those cells. That is where we are finding the exact reasons which protein binds to which 
other protein which blocks secretion or formation of another protein or enzyme. That is the level at which we have to now start seeing. Unfortunately, we are not looking at that level. So today I will discuss that level. I am not saying that the other theory, that is the epigenetic theory of hair loss is the final word. It is a work in progress. But nevertheless, let's shift from the DHT theory of hair loss 